Alrighty folks, this is Shane. If you're watching this video, odds are you wanna know how to stream via your HDMI camcorder or something similar to the web. It's actually kind of complicated, but not that complicated once you know what to do. I'm actually a tech guy, but I stumbled across this particular method and it seemed to work for me. I started a gaming channel called Shane Retro Gamer and I wanted to know how do these guys stream this stuff to the web? So that's how it all started. The first thing you need to do is consider what kind of hardware you have in terms of computers. To put it in simple terms, I had to actually go ahead and build a new PC. I kept the case, I also kept the solid state hard drive that I had in that old computer because it had been upgraded prior. But I also had to go ahead and replace the motherboard, the CPU and the RAM. I opted for an 8350 AMD. It was the top of the line then before all the Ryzen stuff came out. Now it's the Ryzen chips are awesome but that does fine for streaming. There's no need to go and spend huge amounts of money if you're just streaming from an Xbox or from you know, a video camera, you don't really need to spend huge amounts of dollars. If you are a gamer and you wanna stream and play from the same machine, don't buy an AMD, at least the old generation one. Maybe the Ryzen will do it, but you'll need a higher end i7 or something similar. The purpose of this video though is to show you how I connect this camera to my setup and then out to the world. Let's get into it. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time behind the camera today as well, so if you don't see me, it's probably all for the best. This particular unit right here is the Elgato HD60. I'll show you the box, I've still got it. That's it right there. This is a game capture device designed for 60 frames per second capture via an Xbox, which is right below it right here, or via HDMI out on a laptop or or a video camera. This particular unit is designed to capture 60 frames per second and stream it out to the web. That's all it does. As I mentioned earlier, you need one of these to, to go from the video camera to your computer. If we take a closer look at this right now, you can see the USB connection right here. It's a micro USB. This connects to your computer. This is where my actual camcorder HDMI cable comes in from. So you can see this is a Canon proprietary one right here. It's slightly shaped a little bit different for that particular camcorder. You also have a HDMI on the back. This goes into your TV so you can monitor it on your TV. If you don't have a television, you can also monitor it on some computer monitors, but it's designed for the TV. If you've got a plasma TV or LCD, definitely just hook it up to that. It looks great. As you can see from the system requirements on the box, this is absolutely important to try to do this if you don't meet these requirements, don't buy one of these things until you upgrade your computer. Let's take a look at it. So you need Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or later. Most people have Windows 7 or 10. Some have 8, but not as many. Mac OS X 10.9 or later. Now this is the important one right here. Second generation Intel Core i5 CPU or similar, which means you can get away with some of the AMD FX chips, which will save you money in the long term. AMD chips might not be technically as fast on paper, but they're actually quite great for multitasking. A lot of people don't give them any credit at all, but they're actually not bad. I use them for my audio production as well. And to use the stream command, you need second generation Intel Core i7 CPU or equivalent. As I said, the AMD 8350 works great with this particular setup. I have never had any problems with it make sure that you have at least four gig of RAM. Most computers will have eight or 16 these days as well. If you're gonna build one to do this, just get 16 gig of RAM, it's nice and cheap. You might be looking at this case and thinking, man, that's an old school Cooler Master case. Absolutely, it goes back to my Intel Core 2 Duo days. And now it's loaded with the AMD FX. So I kept the case, I upgraded the power supply a while back, so that power supply is pretty recent. But the main changes I made for doing streaming was changing the motherboard and also changing the CPU and RAM. And that's it. So let's fire this thing up. I run Windows 7 on this particular computer. I tried it with Windows 10, but I ended up having some sort of issue where the computer would just continually turn itself off. So I went back to Windows 7. And I've had no problems running the software or anything with the Elgato software. It runs absolutely awesome. 
Now, Elgato does come with its own software for streaming and it's nice and simple to set up, but the, the big problem with it is you kind of can't set your own manual bandwidth based on your own resolution. And that may make no sense to anybody, but basically what the Elgato software does is it decides, okay, your internet connection is not great, so I'm gonna downsample everything that you send to the internet at 480p. What I can do by bypassing that software is still stream at 1080p. It may look a little pixelated, but the beauty of it is at least it's 1080p. I prefer that over 480 any day of the week. I use a particular piece of software called Open Broadcast Software. Just gone ahead and connected my other camcorder to the Elgato right now so you can see how it all connects. So basically with these sources, you have to add a source. You right click in this box, click add, and you go up to video capture device, and then you choose, you type in what you wanna call it, and then you choose the Elgato from there. It's pretty much that easy. You've got a few other options here. I'm gonna go into preview stream and just show you how this looks and show you what I see basically when I go to stream. You're gonna see my face pop up from my other camera and I'm slightly turned around right now. So you can see my camera that I'm shooting the video with on screen and then also the camera that's on this particular screen is this one right here, which is the one that's going through the Elgato. So it's getting kind of probably a little confusing, <laughs> but basically you can do a few different things like you, if you want to put a picture over, you can do that. Double Switch is a game that I've just filmed on my Shane Retro Gamer channel, which I haven't yet uh, uploaded to YouTube. You can also select a second source and have a webcam. Now this is a webcam that's actually located on top of my TV and I've cropped it to this square. So when I do live streams with my games, I can have a webcam like this. You don't need any of this stuff if you just want to use the Google Plus Hangout. You can do that easily enough with a webcam and you're good to go. When you do this though, it looks better, it sounds better, and something you can leave online and know the audio quality is going to be pretty good as well. One key thing here is in the settings tab from the bottom. It brings up this particular menu, you go down to encoding, and then this max bit rate. My theoretical maximum and my average maximum is actually 1,450. I find if I'm pushing my connection at 100%, it doesn't always work. I get a lot of weird glitches, all that kind of stuff. I found dropping it to 1,000, which doesn't sound like a lot because really it isn't, in terms of upload bitrate, made, made the world of difference. I've had zero problems streaming from my house with my HDMI camera with this particular setting. So keep that in mind. I always leave uh, these the same. So you can, you can put it in stereo mode, but because I'm only ever using one microphone when I stream, I choose not to. Uh, if you're streaming a game, change that to stereo, but if you're watching this video, odds are you're not gonna be doing that anyway. I'm not gonna go too far into the configuration of the open broadcast software or OBS as it's known. There's plenty of great tutorial videos online from gaming channels that show you how to set this thing up. The great news is if you just wanna use it for streaming a HDMI camera, it's a hell of a lot easier than setting up a webcam, text overlays, picture overlays, and all that kind of stuff. I'll go ahead now and show you my camera and all that kind of stuff to show you the setup that I particularly use in this room. All right, so that's the camera that I do all of my live streams with. You can see I don't actually have a microphone plugged in here right now, but usually I just run an XLR into input one and use my Rode NT1 or Rode NT2A microphone on a mic stand next to the couch with a regular mic cable. Right now, I just have it set up for a different purpose as I was using it earlier without any of these hooked up. So here's what I see when I'm sitting here doing a live stream. I not only see the camera that's pointing at me with the LCD screen on it, I see this television and I prefer to look at the television than a little LCD screen. Now, that's not an ego thing, it's just an eyesight thing. <laughs> I much prefer that. Some cameras don't like being on without recording. So if you have a camera, some of the consumer level cameras pretty much go into a demo mode or they just shut off. If that's the case, you'll actually need to put an SD card into your camera and hit record. 
That way it's not gonna shut off the stream and make sure you plug your camera into the AC. This is a huge downside of those DSLRs. I recently purchased one of them and I hated it. The reason was it doesn't have an AC adapter which renders it useless for a lot of kind of things that I do at home. I always have to charge the battery, make sure it's full and it's frustrating. This particular camera, the Sony or this Canon, I can just leave it plugged into the mains without a battery in it if I choose to and run it that way. I always prefer to keep a battery on there or just charge up a flat one while I'm doing a stream or whatever. Like you're, you can always multitask stuff that way as well. What I also like to do is have a laptop next to me. If you've got an iPad or something, I'm sure that'll be fine as well. I like to monitor the comments via a laptop instead of having to look all the way over at my computer over there. My eyesight's not as good as it used to be, so for me that's pretty tough. All I do with that particular browser on that computer is just monitor the health of my stream. I zoom up the actual browser window so I can see it clearly and that is it. If I can see at the top that the stream's either green or yellow, I'm good. If it goes red, I've got problems and something else might be happening in my home network. However you wanna monitor your chat, it's up to you. For me though, this particular setup works really well. I like having the TV on just so I can see things in a big format. Ideally, it'd be awesome to be able to have the computer on the screen over here or something like that with the chat, but I like the pass through of the actual way that this Elgato thing works. It hits my TV, hits my computer, and I can also see the stream on the computer as well. So it's, it's, it's a pretty handy tool. Thanks again for watching folks. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions about this video or anything within it, please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As I mentioned, check out how to set up OBS. Just type that into the search engine on YouTube and I guarantee you should be able to find a really great video within the first few clicks. That's how I learned to set it up and if I can do it, you can do it as well. Thanks again folks and I'll catch you all soon. See ya.